Welcome to jobscliffshare.org. This is Danish. This video is actually an IT career related video, but I'm just going to ex explain some of the things that will make sense. Now, this video is about what? What is the scenario over here? The scenario is that we get a lot of people that come to our platform and basically tell us that I want to become a systems administrator because I heard it's not like help desk. It's uh, not a lot of customer service and things like that. Then we tell people that, you know, that's good that you've heard all that stuff, but this is a pretty advanced position and we don't recommend or we don't even teach people who uh, want to become a systems administrator right from that's like the scratch, right? Uh, we have to basically tell people to take our training. So that's kind of like a junior level uh, help desk, junior sysadmin. It's a mixture of a lot of things, a lot of real world skills. And then they will be able to understand what we're talking about. So today I want to give you some examples. Now, if you think that you're technically good, you know some basics. And if you understand what I'm about to say today in this video, then you're ready. You can go for these positions then. But if you're listening to this, these things that I'm going to discuss today and you have no clue about it and you're like, what is he talking about? I never heard this before. That's too complex. Then it is complex. It is an advanced position for you. So this is why then you have to go towards the route of help desk, learn a lot of things, learn some of the basics. And then what I'm about to say, the things today will make sense to you. So I'm not going to do any technical stuff here. I'm not going to show a lot of technical stuff. I'm not going to do all these things that I have in the notepad. This is a lecture video to give this understanding for people who just want to jump into a systems administration. Now, also for the people who think that help desk is like you have heard in 2001 or 1996, this is no more the help desk anymore. Everything is almost mixture of cloud and hands-on, less hardware stuff, more uh, you know, uh, operating system with cloud stuff like OneDrive, Office 365. So it's like a, it's like a junior admin positions, but we're just calling it IT support, desktop support. Some places are very strict. Yes, I can understand that they kind of do a lot of ticketing stuff like that. But most of the positions, a technician, an IT professional who's doing support is doing a lot of stuff now. So it's a fun position now. Um, Sometimes you have to kind of go in to actually make that determination or make the mentality that this is a position that you really want to uh, be working in. But the way we train people is we always tell people to move up. You don't even have to be in the help desk. But if you want to become better in the help desk, of course, you have levels there. So that's enough of that. F today, I want to talk about this one thing in the systems administration that you're going to come across. And of course, system administration is like this, right? Like it's like this, a huge bubble right here, right? And I'm just talking, I'm talking about this much in systems administrator positions, right? So either if you are on prem system or you're doing a cloud stuff in cloud, you're doing uh, virtual stuff, you know, you have a VM or something like that in the cloud um, or and you have, you know, uh, doing a on prem on uh, on virtualization like VMware or Hyper V, you still have r servers running or you could have something like hardware server, which you see in front of the screen. This is a hardware server. And let me show you its uh, specs. So this is the hardware server that we have. It's 108 GB RAM in there. It's 64 bit. It's uh, two processors in there. It's a pretty good uh, server right there. Okay. And it has Windows 2012 R2 data center. So the first term that I'm throwing to a lot of people right here who are brand new, do you know what that means? Do you know what R2 means in a data centers? If you don't know this and you're hearing this for the first time, then there you go. That's your first kind of like check mark right there. Do you know this? If you don't know it, then sh something should click in and like, okay, what is he talking about? He's talking about different type of versions in operating system. So I need to know about that, right? This video is not about explaining all this stuff. This is to kind of give that mentality, to give that answer to people that this is advanced position. So then once you know that this is a R2 data center, do you know this operating system as a whole? Can you navigate in this operating system? This means what I'm about to say is that, do you know what this is? What is server manager, right? Can you navigate between server manager? Can you come over here and click on local server? What is Hyper-V inside? What are the roles inside this server? So if I open this, what are the tools? 
is this a domain controller? Is this not a domain controller? Why is this not a domain controller, right? So if somebody asks you a question like this server, is this a domain controller or not? You can look at it. A person who has experience with servers could just instantly say that's not a domain controller. A person who will ask you, okay, how would I get a domain controller? Then? So how can I make this, how can I turn this into a domain controller? Or can I make this a kind of like a secondary or, you know, um, uh, primary domain controller or secondary domain controller or anything like that? Well, how would I do that? So, you know, you need to know what you're doing over here and you need to understand the operating system as a whole then, right? So now, remember in this specific video that I'm going to just talk about one thing about system administration is a simple upgrade. Can you do a simple upgrade? What do I mean by that, right? How can you do an upgrade on the server, on a hardware level, on a VM level, on a cloud level? Do you know how to take a backup of the whole server before you do that upgrade. Can you take a VM backup or VHD backup or image inside the virtualization? Can you do that? Can you take snapshots before you do an upgrade? Can you move VM to another places and do like a in-place upgrade without impacting the main site? Maybe at nighttime you got that VHD and then you worked on it in the morning at work, but nobody's impacted. You, they're still using the website, right? Because look, for a company, the main thing is that my site can't be down. I'm making $5,000 in a day. I, I'm not going to lose that, right? So it, can be, it cannot be down like that. For something like that, it cannot be down. There's a lot of things, of course, people will say there's a redundancy. You have a backup servers and stuff like that. I'm not talking about that right now. I'm talking about somebody needs to know how to upgrade this whole system. That's just a simple upgrade. Do you know how to get the ISOs? Do you know how to burn this? You know, if it's like a hardware, do you know how to do that? Even, you know, getting the ISO and basically mounting it, you know, how do you know how to mount the, uh, the ISO? Once you mount it, then what do you do, right? You have to run the, that installation. Now, when you run the installation, do you understand that there are certain requirements before you do an upgrade? What is the space requirements? What is the security requirements? What are the updates requirements for servers for it to be upgraded? And also, what are the version requirements? Can you do an upgrade from standard to R2 and stuff like that? Okay, that's just basic stuff that I'm talking about today. Updating is, of course, normal stuff. A lot of people know that. But this is where things get a little tricky. Okay, a lot of people think that systems administration, you go into a server, you just plug in that new ISO or CD and then boom everything is done it doesn't work that way because if you think about it servers are used for a specific reason in the company there got to be a reason for you to spin up a server so most likely it's a web server with a lot of applications inside that web server IIS or it's a, some type of service like FTP you know you're providing that file transfer file transferring ability to your customers your vendors and it's heavily being used or it's a domain controller it's a DHCP DNS whatever it is it has a lot of roles going in there so most likely you're going to be in this position when somebody asks you can you do an upgrade can you do an upgrade on our server you cannot just go in there and do an upgrade blindly right you cannot think that this is going to be a simple server it's not going to be what i'm showing you in this right here it's not going to be like simple as that it's not going to be empty server most likely even if it's empty there's something in this server that they're using it for right if it was just a data server like filing stuff like that but still even if it's a file server you know uh, you're, you're, if you're using a file resource manager or something like that more complex stuff then you still need to know right most of the time when you upgrade a server you get issues with this, these type of things, websites, right? Uh, because a lot of people have custom applications, it break. Now what? The config files. When you upgrade it, you know, is it is it gonna be online? And then what happens to the IP addresses? Do you know how to put a static IP address in the DNS? Do you know how to do all that stuff? Now that's not just it. Remember, when you're running a web server or, or servers like that, most of these things are going out. So think about this scenario right here. When you have a server inside the company, then you have clients outside the company. So what's in the middle? There's this connection between these two, right? 
So if you have a connection like this, so basically there's a connection going on between these two. So if you have a connection going, then what's out there? There's routers, there's firewalls, and then your servers comes right here somewhere, right? So then it has to have rules. So somebody needs to understand if you put an FTP, a brand new FTP, first of all, you need to know the whole about FTP itself. But then you need to know about how does that FTP goes out of my firewall. So what I'm what I'm basically implying right here is that it's not just these servers. Everything is attached to it then. And that is where the systems administration skills, you know, uh, you know why we call it complex why we call it advanced because you're you're not stuck in this Microsoft server anymore as soon as you put FTP you gotta test the firewall you gotta test different things you gotta test it you gotta know um, the ports and stuff like that so there's a lot that you need to start learning and then of course when start when people starting putting their applications and applications has to do something on the other side or something else you know it has to do some connections or whatever that's where things gets complex and that's where you're starting to realize that system administration is not about servers anymore system administration is way bigger than servers now server has become a vm in in our data center a data center is big right we have like this well if it's one room still we have a lot of servers and in that in that room maybe there are like four or five big v, uh, like hypervisors or whatever you are using for virtualization and those small vms are your servers now and you will install it and the rest you're doing all of your job around that and everything else like you know connections firewall applications but then even it gets more complex when you have like like cloudflare like cdn type of stuff like you know people are using uh azure now cloud stuff came in now too so then you have on-prem connections going on with your cloud connections and then how do you how do you make these two connect that's where a systems administrator need to know all that stuff. So that's why I say to people to who comes to our platform is please don't don't put yourself into this situation where you're thinking too much about systems administration right now. If you're brand new, your focus has to be in the help desk area with very bottom level meaning you need to know about the operating system windows 10 you need to know about the networks basic networking you need to know about the, how the domain connections are going through active directory you need to know about office 365 and then you need to know about some basic like uh, techniques like proactive techniques where you can do deploy a software to multiple machines gathering information through spiceworks or some other tool that you have if you're allowed to do that if you're not allowed to do it most likely people have it they have it already done most of the people most of the IT people don't want to make their life crazy so they already have systems in place so all you got to do is to get in and learn the real world skills on the bottom level then you get into a systems administration security networking cloud this is your option this is your this is that's where things are clear to you the picture is clear you're not putting your leg everywhere now so that's why at the end i want to tell you this one thing that please do not confuse yourself at this point don't don't start thinking too much about cloud stuff like cloud as an azure administration no you just need to know what is cloud okay you need to know how to add a user in the cloud or office 365 is must that's that's something you do most likely and then not not also not at the a very specialist level help desk level that's why our courses are like office 365 for help desk active directory for help desk uh you know ticketing systems for help desk we never we know we never go deep in there right we know we because we we don't want to confuse people this is not this is something that certification have done this is something that degrees have done this is where a lot of people outside have done to you to give you this broad answers and then you know mess you up so we're not going to do that we're against that. We're, we're not into that. We're basically into specifically targeting certain areas that you should be very focused. Cut out all this junk from your head right now and focus on what you want to do. So this is my answer to you. If you understood everything that I talked today, and even in the server level, meaning I didn't even touch like Cloudflare, I didn't even touch firewalls, I didn't even touch some little bit of networking for sysadmins, I didn't even touch more of like, uh, you know, more advanced of like SCCM or deployments or some really like, you know, things that can really uh, sysadmin can do right now. I didn't even touch all that stuff, right? logs can, uh, how do you uh, automate stuff no i didn't touch that i just touch one specific thing server and if you got all this stuff i still think you're ready because the rest you're going to learn 
You can learn. If you know what what is IS, you know how to manage your applications in IS, you know what is app pool, you know what is configs, you know what is FTP, you know what are domain controllers, and you know it pretty good, you're ready. You really don't need anything. That's this means that you have done enough work, you have done enough study on your own that you think you're ready. Uh, I think you're ready. I think you know this because if you know all this stuff, all you need all you need is just go and tell someone that look, I know all this stuff. I know. If you're not ready, go back to this, the help desk administration. We have courses on jobskillshare.org, free ones too, but the one that we are mainly focusing on is the live training because that's how I sit, how I'm sitting with you right now. That's how I sit, and I kind of like, okay, this is what you do, this is what you do, this is what you do, and we make you a complete, complete professional. We never claim that you're going to become an IT professional after our training. You're mentally ready, <coughs> and you're technically ready to start their career and to practically do things that doesn't mean you became an IT professional that was my last comment thank you so much for watching this if you have any questions please let me know thank you